Hi there. When I started looking into building a shoulder rig for myself, um, the $99 of the small rig basic shoulder rig seemed like a good deal. But you find out very, very quickly that that's nowhere near enough and it is completely lacking and this is actually a waste of time. Um, I then did a lot more research into it and I landed on the Tilter Lightweight Shoulder Rig. Now, obviously it doesn't stop there, but for the $240 difference, so this is $99, the basic price of the Tilter uh, Lightweight Shoulder Rig is $339, you get a hell of a deal. Let's get into the build. So the uh, Tilter Lightweight Shoulder Rig comes in uh, the soft case and when you then unpack it, this is basically the basic rig. The only thing I've added there is a 15 millimeter rod mount at the front, uh, which is part of something else. Take notice of the receiver plate. The receiver plate takes a Manfrotto plate on the longitudinal and a wide Arca Swiss on the latitude. So you can use two different types of plates, which is really handy. The Arca Swiss ones are typically used for Ronin setup, so you don't need to switch the plate on the camera. The first thing I swapped out then was the handles. I'm using the uh, Tilter Nucleus M handles for the shoulder mount, and that's basically to control two motors, which uh, will be added later. Next, we are adding the camera. Um, I'm using, for this build, a Panasonic Lumix BGH1 with the Panasonic Leica 25 to 50 millimeter f1.7 lens, a, a small rig cage, and a small rig handle. And that handle specifically is to accommodate for the XLR audio module. The next thing then being added is the V mount plate. And I picked the Nitsa V mount plate for a couple of specific reasons. One thing, it has an on-off button, uh, so I can switch devices off that are permanently powered and don't have an on-off button themselves. The other thing is it has 3D tabs, 12 volt and 8 volt, a USB-A and a USB-C PD that is capable of 9 volt 3 amps, which is what you typically need for either the Canon R5C or the Panasonic GH6. So the power for the uh, BJ1 is then added to DTAP and a LAN C trigger cable that's being triggered from the Nucleus Nano motor that I'm adding on the other side here. And the Nucleus Nano motor then is powered from the 12 volt plug on the V mount plate. And this is one of the things that uh, is permanently powered, so it's going to be powered off when the power button on the V mount is pressed. Additionally, I've added a shotgun mic for scratch audio up in the in the culture of the handle, the XLR1 module, and a wireless module for a Sennheiser. The next thing we're adding is a USB SSD hard drive um, and a Blackmagic Video Assist 5-inch 12G. It's mounted to a small rig NATO EVF mount, which is the best mount for these monitors around if you want it in that position. And you can actually still move this even further forward. You just have to be careful that the monitor isn't visible in your, in your camera view. But for me, this setup doesn't particularly work. I couldn't be looking at a monitor in that position for a very long time. We'll move it here to the top instead. Uh, because I still need it for recording. We're using a uh, cold shoe on the handle and a Nitze cold shoe to NATO friction mount. The recorder is needed for recording either ProRes or HDMI raw to B raw from the BGH1. So it'll, it'll sit for nicely up there and um, out of the way. And what I'm adding instead is a EVF from Zcam. Um, I picked the Zcam EVF essentially because, first of all, this is a proper EVF with, with, uh, with proper casing. There, there is a cheaper EVF, the Portkeys Ally EVF, but the build quality of that and the components used just didn't make any sense to me. So we're adding a Zcam 
EVF at the top here. The mount that I'm using is from Nietzsche. Nietzsche have mounted it, it, it like that on the, on the front of the handle in their product pictures, but their mount is different. The mount that actually bolted to the shoulder rig in, in, in the beginning, the 15 millimeter rod mount, is that Nietzsche mount for the front of the handle. For the small rig handle, I found a small rig airy locating pin rod mount and then I needed a quarter inch to three fifths adapter for the screw. And that works quite nicely, but for me, this is actually mounted a bit too far back um, and also too high. So I'm using the Nietzsche rod mount in the bottom and I mounted it in there. And now I have it sort of in the position where I want. You can also see that I've added antennas here to the Zcam EVF mount. And what they do is the Zcam EVF mount has a feature where you can wirelessly connect a mobile phone or a tablet to the EVF and you can view on a tablet separately what the camera operator sees in the EVF. So you can have a director or somebody else viewing the exact footage that you are recording with all the controls and, and information that you have on your screen, which is quite neat. Let's turn this around um, and we are adding the Tilter Mirage matte box. Now this matte box is uh, expanded. So I have uh, two circular filter trays in this and there is a motor here for the BND. So I have the BND filter in there. That's powered from the USB-A port. Now the way it is with the tilter motors is that for example the Nucleus Nano you can power it off 5 volt but for many lenses that might not be enough power for uh, to drive that um, so that's why that's powered off 12 volt but for the Mirage motor 5 volt is more than sufficient so that went into the USB A port. The other thing I've added here is the uh, tentacle sync time code generator and that can be powered from USB-C PD. So in this build, the USB-C PD port on the V-mount plate will be used to power the tentacle sync, even though the tentacle sync should in theory have enough power to bring you to a day without even having power on it. Finally, we're adding a V-mount uh, to the whole set. Um, and here's the reason why I went with the NITS V-mount plate. I didn't want any cables to be connected to the battery. That means I can change the V-mount battery without fiddling with any, with any cables on the V-mount. I basically just slide the V-mount pack off the V-mount plate, replace the battery, and off you go. Everything is back up and running without having to remove or pre-plug any cables. Now I could in theory, if I stuck for, for a plug, I can use the ones in the V-mount. These headbox ones only have one P-tab and one USB-A port. Um, I have a small rig compact V-mount packs that obviously have more connectors, but to be honest, this V-mount plate does everything. Yeah, so basically, apart from the contents of the Tilter Lightweight uh, shoulder rig, these are the bits that I've added on, and obviously some of that is not uh, really related to the shoulder rig, um, more related to the camera and varies with the choice of camera. So in this setup, I use the Panasonic BGH-1 with a Audio-Technica shotgun microphone. The holder I was using is actually from a Sennheiser, the Panasonic XLR-1 module, um, a Sennheiser wireless microphone, the Tentacle Sync timecode module, uh, the um, USB, the T Samsung T5 USB SSD hard drive, and a Blackmagic Video Assists 5-inch 12G as my recorder, not so much for monitoring. Um, those bits can be variable and swapped out. It could be an Atomos, it could be my Canon R5C, which I'm recording with, so I can't use that. Well, I use it for recording, obviously. And <clears throat> all the other bits sort of relate to the setup. The two handles, basically, I've seen a lot of rigs where people are using the focus wheel that comes with, let's say, the Nucleus Nano. But this this is not really practical to mount somewhere on the um, on the rig. And then you take your hand off the handle to operate the focus. If, if you have somebody else pulling focus for you, then this is perfectly valid. But if you're a one man band with a shoulder rig and you, you do the focus pulling yourself or your zoom control, in my case, 
it's Zoom and the VND that I control myself. I don't need somebody else to do that for me. So the handles make a lot more sense. And the, the wheel for the for the VND is actually even more awkward when you when you already have your you have your hands on, on your shoulder rigs. So that's why I went with those two handles. I could probably also have done with one handle. The right hand handle has a uh, zoom joystick and then it has the scroll wheel and I could do everything in that. But the for, for ergonomics, um, the handles that are with the tilter shoulder rig are slightly smaller, so they are not quite the same. And that's exactly also the other thing I see is that people use like side grips with uh, focus wheels um, on shoulder rigs. So you have like a, a side grip here and then you have your normal handle here and your hands are offset. And that's, it's gonna introduce fatigue if, you, if you're doing an hour long shoot. So <clears throat> that's why I went with those two handles. The other thing is that these focus wheels here specifically, the Nucleus Nano and the one for the Tilter uh, Mirage V&D, um, they use a 14500 cell and that's not, it lasts a couple hours, but by having two 18650s in each of the handles, you get a much longer run time uh, on that. Then as I was saying with the monitor uh, and, and recorder, I can't like a monitor this far from me, in front of me, that's not good on my eyes and it's not something that I find something that I would want to work with. So the EVF, while these are expensive, are worth a worthwhile investment. Um, it is better for your eyes, it's much more relaxing to do your recording with that and with the Zcam EVF specifically, um, you on top of that have the Wi-Fi antenna so you can actually also at the same time send your feed to somebody else to to see what what you're actually recording. This is the monitor, the NATO monitor mount or more calls an EVF mount for um, that I used for the uh, recorder in the lower setting um, and opposed to many of the other ones um, like these, this one can actually be extended quite a bit um, and it gives you a real nice um, way of mounting and a lot of flexibility on, 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 on where you can have your monitor. So it's worthwhile having, um, even if I don't use it in this particular shoulder rig. From Nitsa then, Nitsa makes lots of little friction mounts like these with NATO to NATO, cold shoe to NATO, um, Ari was set to NATO, um, Ari locate and pin to NATO, uh, really, really good stuff. Um, I, I haven't found many, under, I think Condor Blue makes some also, but many of the other manufacturers don't have specifically with NATO mounts. This kit then is the Nitze uh, EVF mount that I've been using. It consists of the bracket, a rod, um, this NATO rail, and then this Ari Rosette to NATO. And this was actually specifically designed for the Zcam EVF. So that's, that's a good piece of kit to have. The Nitsa V-mount then. I've been through quite a few of V-mounts. I have tried the small rig one, I have the tilter one with the USB CPD on the tilter. Um, I have the older tilter ones. I have the X -Li FX line one. There is a uh, nano version of this V-mount also, also with USB CPD. If you use a modern camera that can be powered with USB CPD, this or the nano version of this is the best V-mount plate that you can find um, for, for flexibility. Whereas this big one has three uh, P-tabs. It has a USB-A here, it has a 8 volt here, and then on the other side it has a USB-C, a 12 volt, and here's the other P-tab. And that means I can, this model is called the N21E. It comes with the rod mount as it is, and um, basically you can connect everything to this V-mount plate. You have no cables connected to your battery, 
and it doesn't matter then uh, when you have to change battery you just pull the battery plug the next one in the other thing is for example that the nucleus nanomotor for example doesn't switch off it doesn't have a, a way of switching it off so by switching off the entire v-mount everything is powered down that's a great feature to have and that's why i went with this obviously the nucleus system allows you to trigger recording from the handles any of their focus pullers can do that uh, focus wheels uh, the handles too and like a, 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 so a, a start stop cable for your specific camera is always a good plan um, the tilda mirage uh, mud box that this is very very compact it's very lightweight and you don't need to mount it on a on a rail system if you look at specifically the tilda lightweight shoulder rig has a one place for one little rod that's where i mounted the motor but i had no other rods on the camera so this was just mounted to the lens with the um, with the spacer ring and that works perfectly well and you can take it apart you can basically you can take this front element off um, the, the, the front lid um, i have a an extra tray in here so i have two circular filter trays there is a limitation that once you start stacking them that you will be limited to how wide you can go so what they state is with two filter trays uh, so up to four filters um, you can go maximum uh, of 24 millimeters on super 35 or 35 millimeters on full frame before you start seeing vignetting um, so that's something to keep in mind but beyond that this is actually really really good i have different cables then this is the cable that came with the zcam um, evf so that's already comes with a p-tap cable i have this uh, micro usb to um, to dc which is for the nucleus nano um, i then have a unregulated dc to p-tap cable i use that for the video assist now the video assist on blackmagic's website specifies 12 volt but i have confirmed with blackmagic that it has the same voltage range as the blackmagic pocket cinema cameras so you can basically fire it unregulated straight off a v-mount p-tap connection no problem there it will take uh, it will take the voltage of that for the bjh1 i went with a 12 volt regulated cable to be sure that i have 12 volt uh, out of the out of the camera and then <clears throat> uh, for both the sdi connection from the camera to the evf and also for um, the xlr cable for the shotgun mic i wanted some cables that weren't like beefy that weren't going to make the whole thing clunky and, and, and getting in my way and stuff like that. And these are actually from uh, Alvin's cables, I believe, um, both of them. So both the SDI and the XLR cable. Um, I'll leave links to all of this stuff down below um, so you can basically find it yourself. Um, I have then a, uh, a BNC to 3.5 millimeter cable for the tentacle sync and all the usb cables are just standard usb c uh, cables or usb a to usb c um, on the rods i used uh, four inch 15 millimeter rods from small rig and just to make it tidy you can get these end caps um, these low profile ones here are rounded on the end these are small rig ones and these bit fatter ones um, with the flat surface on the back these are nice rig ones and they come part of a kit so it's probably easier to pick up the small rig ones either way i hope that um, you have found this video useful that you found some inspiration here and um, if you did leave us a like maybe subscribe to the channel for future videos and uh, otherwise there's some videos here that you might be watching see you